Today we are in Wheaton, Illinois, a very far western suburb of Chicago, and we're here to see the grave of a little boy named Etzel Almedo, who was born in Mexico and uh, murdered by his parents. This is a Catholic cemetery from the Diocese of Joliet, and we are, we're in. Etzel Almedo. Um, this is a story about a little boy who who never had a chance. Uh, really sad story here. Um, I'm here at the cemetery. We're going to walk over to his grave. He is in the uh, an area that is reserved for all little innocent children called the Holy Innocents, which is uh, just ahead. As we walk there, uh, I'll tell you the, briefly a little bit about the story. Uh, little Atzel was born November 5th, 2002. He, uh, he had a family of uh, five siblings, mother and a stepfather. Um, he was born in Mexico City start his innocent life and he had a very very happy life he uh he's remembered by his brothers and sisters particularly his older oldest sister karina for all kinds of antics but uh, what happened was in 2003, the mother and the stepfather, and by the way, their names are not being released because they're trying to find them, uh, the authorities, right now. Uh, looks like this is for a uh, future tombstone foundation. They're trying to find them because they fled. It's a little girl, 13 years old. She passed away. Caitlin. Caitlin Wright. Caitlin uh, died of. Uh, a spinal, uh, a spinal problem, the uh, atrophy of the spine, I believe. Innocent kids taken early. So they, uh, the parents came to the U.S. They did not bring the kids in 03. They left the kids with relatives. And um, it was early in 2005 that the mother sent for little Itzel and uh, one of the other siblings. And it's kind of interesting that it was late in 2005, just to several months later, by no coincidence that while that was happening, a little, or after that happened, a little boy here was found by authorities uh, from a uh, tip from somebody walking their dog, of course, that found a blue, sa a, a blue sack. And in the blue sack, was a little boy. He was in a blue button-down shirt from Walmart and blue pants. 
and they couldn't figure out who he was. No matter how hard they tried, his identity could not be gained. So they called him Little Boy Blue. The, uh, in, in late 2005, the, um, the mother and the father came back to Mexico City to uh, get the rest of the kids. And when the kids asked, where's Etzel? They said, oh, uh, he's, with, uh, he's with his biological father. Whenever the kids would ask about him after that, or say, even say his name, they were forbidden to say his name, they would be beaten severely by the stepfather. Now this guy, again, we don't know his name. We don't know his first name, I believe, but he was a really bad guy, as is the case in many of these, many of these stories. Um, he, he was a criminal. He was arrested for battery and criminal trespass, but his big thing was fraud, uh, ID fraud. He, he either worked with or led a, uh, ID fraud ring in Chicago. It's a beautiful picture here of a couple. Jerome and Lydia when they were married. They were married October 27th, 1945, right at the end of World War II. Very memorable time then. That was a time of great happiness and prosperity. Um, so the family settled in 2006. They settled in Cicero, Illinois, which is, uh, it's on the west side, near west side. And the children were just brutalized by the stepfather. Just brutalized. And all the reports to the police and the battery and the and the mother really didn't she really didn't help matters um, she let really let it happen but this guy was just and finally Karina at school or through some way got to the police and uh, started to spill the beans on what was happening at home I see here we have a U.S. Navy World War II veteran, Curtis E. Maxwell. Look at that picture, guys. What a classic. Beautiful wife, Catherine, together here in eternity. Curtis passed in 2013, and Catherine followed uh, just uh, under three years later. We are here at the uh, Holy Innocents area of the cemetery. And what I see is uh, a lot of little graves. Tiny spacing for little little angels. A lot of decorations, guys. A lot of uh, kids being remembered. Hallie, Haley, Grace. Well, the police 
uh, interviewed Karina, and they immediately brought the stepfather and the mother in for questioning. Of course, the coward and criminal, his answer was, oh, she got the bruises from her older or her younger brother. And, uh, you know, just, and he was so cooperative and so nice. He said, I'm in your hands. Oh, sure. Well, it was right after that that they, uh, they fled. They disappeared, leaving the kids, assumably, to uh, Mexico. They were, uh, they were able to identify the little boy, little Atzel, through DNA with his sister. His sister's been great, Karina. She's really stepped up and is really prominent in this uh, case. This is an ongoing case. This is uh, a search right now for these, these people. Look at all the toys. Happy Halloween sister, says on the pumpkin. Catherine Mary Snyder, April 30th, 1961, age two days. A cute little, little boy here, Colin. Little Etzel is here, uh, yeah, right here. The little truck. The ground is, uh, there's a depression here. I think he, of course, with the analysis of the DNA, they probably had to exhume him. Hey, buddy. There he is. Uh, son, Etzel, son, Almedo. Now that's the new carving they put in, the Etzel and the Almedo around the word son in the middle. That is old and under that, uh, of course, is the original, also unknown but not forgotten, October 8th, 2005. The community here, the authorities, were amazing. They never forgot about Etzel. They worked so hard. They provided the grave donations. Uh, I think there were a hundred people at the the burial here for the little boy. So that's about all I can say. I. Uh, can only hope that they find these two uh, horrible parents and extradite them back to face the, to face the crime that they committed in dumping this uh, this poor boy who was uh, who died of blunt force trauma and was left in the little blue bag like garbage. Well, they're the garbage. Let's bring them back. If anybody knows anything, please call the Wheaton police. And let's get some justice for this little boy. He was a good boy.